Swine flu breeds in pigs, spreads then from person to person. It's infected eight people in this country, 1,000 people in Mexico, 1,000 people in Mexico right now. 68 people there have died. That's up from 60 just a few hours ago. Right now, Mexico City is virtually shut down. Cities across the American Southwest are on alert, and just now the Associated Press moved a bulletin saying that 75 students at a high school here in New York City have now fallen ill with flu-like symptoms and are being tested for swine flu. Dr. Sanjay Gupta is going to join us shortly, but first, Randy Kay has the breaking news. Swine flu on the move. And now health officials say the same virus that's killed dozens in Mexico is also in the U.S. Just hours ago, another case of the deadly flu found here in San Diego. That makes eight. In Mexico, more than 1,000 people infected, at least 68 dead. We are worried as well. Uh, our concern has grown since yesterday. All of the victims in the U.S. have recovered. But in Mexico City, schools are closed. Libraries and museums shut down. Residents wearing masks. The Centers for Disease Control is working closely with California and Texas to learn more about the victims. Swine flu is typically found only in pigs or in people who have been around pigs. Health officials are stumped. None of the U.S. patients had direct contact with pigs. Only one had visited Mexico. Clearly, there is evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. Remember 2003 when SARS exploded? It spread from China to 37 countries in a matter of weeks. More than 770 people died. There is a real possibility that this is the next pandemic. You would find one community after, after another w would have probably somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of the entire population would get infected with this virus. The overwhelming majority of those people would, would have a terrible two or three days and a week later they're fine. The World Health Organization says the world is now closer to an influenza pandemic than at any time in the last 40 years. On a scale of one to six, the organization puts the threat level at three, a pandemic alert. Randy Kay, CNN, New York. We want to get the latest now from the Mexican capital. Tracy Wilkinson is Mexico City Bureau Chief for the Los Angeles Times. She joins us now by phone. Tracy, what, what's the scene, the scene like there now? A thousand people so far been affected, right? Right, a thousand are, are suffering from a flu that that uh, officials suspect is the swine flu. Um, as as you mentioned, dozens of people have died, 60 and counting, more than 60 now dead. Of which it should be said, only 20 have been directly linked to the swine flu. But it is thought that many of these others are also from the from the same the same strain. Um, I wouldn't say that there's panic in Mexico City, but there is alarm. This is dominated uh, TV, radio, newspapers all day long with officials telling people, telling the public what to do, what precautions to take, uh, distributing the uh, surgical masks, people wearing those, schools closed from, from daycare through university, private and public. That's millions of, of students. So who they've actually shut school. down all the schools? Yes in Mexico City and the state of Mexico, which, you know, is the, the part of uh, the state that is around the city of the, the capital of Mexico, an area of 20 million people. So this is a, this is a huge thing. Um, the schools will be closed through the weekend and possibly next week as well. They, they haven't decided, but they will decide in the next year. So they've canceled uh, for this weekend concerts, sporting events. They're closing museums, uh, libraries. Um, is, is it mostly old or, or the very young who have died due to this? No, and that's that's the strange thing, and that's what has um, particularly worried and perplexed uh, health authorities here, is that, no, it is not the usual vulnerable populations of the elderly and the young. This has been um, heretofore healthy people, uh, young adults, people in their 20s, uh, early 30s. Uh, so that is what is particularly worrisome about this. And do we know where this thing started? Well, we don't. Most of the cases um, have been uh, tied to here in Mexico City and the surrounding state. However, there are a handful of cases in about six different states all over the country. So, so no, we don't know. We don't yet know where exactly it started and how exactly it started. And in terms of what the government's doing, I mean, you said they shut down the schools. Are there plans for? quarantine? How do they deal with those who are infected? Um, no, well, people who are infected are in hospitals. Um, they're talking about having to possibly shut down offices and 
and uh, you know workplaces starting next week. I think they'll, they'll again this, that decision they'll make over the next few days as they see how 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 much this spreads. The um, the death rate they said was slowing, so they I think they feel like they may now have a start to have a control over it, but but. People who are sick are, are in the hospital. That's right. It is scary stuff. Tracy Wilkinson, uh, LA Times Bureau Chief from Mexico City, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Stay safe. Let's dig deeper now with our own 360 MD, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay, how serious is this? Well, you know, it sounds like it's, it's fairly serious, in part because uh, there seems to be evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. Typically, when you think of swine flu, you think of a, a flu that has passed because of contact with pigs. Uh, but there's clearly human-to-human -human transmission here. And also, Anderson, this is a virus the world has really never seen before. You and I have talked about this sort of thing, viruses that sort of emerge. Uh, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of investigations on this. It's a bit of a mystery now but if you sort of start to look at the makeup of this virus it's made up of several different viruses they're calling it a swine virus but look at all the things that they're starting to figure out first of all it seems to have components of the North American swine virus the avian influenza the bird flu we've talked a lot about this not the not, not the worst kind of bird flu but a component of it human influenza which makes it contagious from human to human and also uh, forms of swine influenza from Asia and Europe uh, we, we've been making a lot of calls today Anderson on this all the infectious disease organizations are concerned about this in part because they don't know exactly from where it originated. We're not sure just how virulent uh, or just how, lo how large the mortality rates are going to be, and they're not sure exactly where it is going. So they got to figure this stuff out before we can really get a sense of, of how big a problem it is. Yeah, as you and I were reporting in our Planet in Peril documentary uh, this past year, we, we spent a lot of time in Africa looking at very, the, you know, wh what the next pandemic is, where That's it will right. come from, how it will spread. And, I, and as to reiterate what you said, and what's so troubling is this isn't just crossing, it's not just a zoonotic virus crossing from an animal to a human, which would limit the amount of number of people who would actually get affected. The fact that it's now passing from person to person is of right. concern. And as we saw in Africa, you know, in these remote places, viruses cross over all the time. But now, because of, of air travel and increased roads, a virus that used to stay geographically isolated can now spread uh, around the world very quickly. I just want to show some of what we uh, saw in Central Africa a short time ago. Contact with some animal in this remote village that previously might have led to the jump of a virus into that community that would have uh, maybe infected a few people, maybe infected one person, probably would have died out. Now all of a sudden that remote village is immediately connected to the major city and through air transportation and ships through the rest of the world. So something that's in the middle of nowhere, here for example, can potentially, you know, be in New York in the course of 48 hours. So Sanjay, you have 68 dead people now in Mexico City. You have 1,000 people infected in Mexico City. You've got a handful uh, of cases known in the United States already. Now we just have this breaking news that just crossed on the wire a short time, minutes ago about possibly 70-some-odd uh, high school students in New York City are, are now going to be tested for this because they have fallen ill. Is this a pandemic, a global epidemic? Well, it's a good question, and from because, because of your interview there, you, you get the sense that it's so hard to pinpoint that question, because uh, is this because of air travel? Is it because of something else that's causing these sort of spurts of activity all around the world? There are criteria, Anderson, to, to sort of call something a pandemic, according to the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, one of the things you've got to ask, is this something that is new? We answered that question. It is new. This is a virus the world hasn't seen before. Does it cause severe disease? It's killing people. It, it has uh, caused the death of 68 people now in Mexico, as you mentioned. Is it easily transmissible and sustainable in a population? That is a little bit of a question mark still. It does appear to be transmissible. How sustainable is this? Is this something that's just going to fade away over the next couple of days? Or are we going to be talking about this next week? We don't know the answer to this. But, you know, this is a true medical investigation, Anderson. People are working on this right now. After they figure out what it is, now they've got to figure out where it's going. Uh, I don't wanna, we don't want to freak anyone out. It, just in terms of symptoms, what should somebody be looking for? And what should, should they do if they suddenly, you know, feel like they, they've got a flu? And, and how do you separate it from just a normal flu? It, it's going to be hard. As you, as you just reported what's happening in New York City, uh, if, a, if several people in a certain community start to come down with flu-like symptoms and these are the same sorts of things that are different than just a cold in addition to uh, having runny nose headache fever you might get the muscle aches uh, overwhelming fatigue it's going to come on pretty quickly the fever is going to be pretty high usually over 101 point degree uh, 101.5 degrees fahrenheit uh, and and also if uh, people around you are also getting sick it sort of speaks to this 
person-to-person -person transmission. You're absolutely right, though, to, to, to sort of urge uh, uh, not, people not to be freaked out here. It's unlikely to happen to anybody who's watching right now, but it may happen in clusters. And if it does, the public health officials are going to need to be on top of that and possibly uh, uh, sterilize a school like they're doing in New York City and try to get people treated. All right, we'll stay on top of it as well. Sanjay, appreciate it. Dr. Sanjay Gupta for us tonight. Quick reminder that, that an encore presentation